Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. One of those few small projects that have come my way. Like I said in the previous video, carbs and real basic stuff only. That's all I'm taking on. One of those is Al's carburetor for his XP. I think it's a 1020. And if I recall correctly, it wouldn't pull fuel. I've gone through, it looks great. I can't find anything wrong other than accelerator pump being a little bit sticky but I think that's cleaned out well now so for starters here's what I've received in the mail the XP 1020 had that idle air bypass that goes right down to the cylinder and this is just adjust the the trim a little bit uh, in order to test this carb I need to bolt it on something well the C-series intake manifold is completely different the 2100 intake manifold is completely different, which means I'm now doing the annoying intake manifold swap right now to try and bolt this up so that I can run it on my saw, which I know runs because I ran this saw today on the firewood hill very briefly. Not enough, it was too cold and I was not in the mood to do video stuff. Just didn't want to deal with the setup and all that other junk. Uh, so I ran it for just a brief amount of time, enough to <laughs> get it stuck and have to use my XL500 to free it. That was pretty fun. I'd been using the 500 most of the day when I was cutting and was used to that feel, and I went one little tickle too long and pinched it in a cut. And got to cut it right out. So, yeah. Crap happens sometimes. That's just the way it is. Alright. Oh, man. That's my 17... No. 273A. This is Al's 222. Just going to bolt that right up if we can. The 222A Tillotson is a bit of a pain only because of the accelerator pump. It is very difficult to get a wrench in to tighten this properly. With the accelerator pump linkage in place, as soon as I get this nut started, I'll show you guys what the hell I'm talking about. Can't even get my finger in there hardly to start that nut. I'm sure Home Light intended for you to take that off to do this, and I'm stubborn and I don't want to. Or maybe they didn't think about it at all and just left it to all of us to figure out. So there's the accelerator pump that I'm talking about, and there's the nut behind there that you got to try and tighten down. Pretty redonkulous. So consequently, Typically, we'll tighten this with a needle nose pair of pliers until the last second and get that last little squiggle turn out of the wrench. You can usually get it just somewhere before you get to the carb body. Yep, there we go. And before you get jammed up in that accelerator pump linkage to the point where you bend it. Because that is not what you want to do, obviously. You don't in any way want to damage these old carbs. Because there's no guarantee you'll be able to fix them. Alright. Let's hope for the best here. Alright. Go forward. Put that one there. I'm not going to hook everything up. I just want to run this if I can. What the hell are you doing, you nutsack? The carburetor support is, ah, dang it, pain in the butt. I know why it's there. Makes this a little bit impossible. God dang it. You know, this is the kind of fun stuff that I 
just don't miss. Damn it. Get out of the way. Did not want to take that brand off. I mean, actually, this one needle is bent. At least it sure looks like it the way it's going through there. All right, let's squish this down. Okay, we need to go hog wild on it. Now it may fire off because I spilled a little fuel. Assembly there. I'm going to see what this is set at first. Well, the low needle was only open half a turn here, so that definitely doesn't bode well. I'm going to go to one and a quarter there. High needle wasn't even open. That was a literally a quarter turn. Okay. Well, that could have something to do with what's going on. Grab some earmuffs and we'll see if we can make some racket. I don't know if I flooded that or not. I'm going to say not. Or maybe so. I say I ran this today. I know it's in good shape. is extremely efficient on this saw. Made for a much bigger bar than what I've got on it. All right, I'm remembering now. This is actually your idle speed. That's how it controls it. It actually introduces outside air to lean out the low speed. Because you can see there's nothing drilled here on the carb like there is for what comes on the 2100. So, long and the short of it is it runs. I probably have that a little bit rich based on the amount of spit back that we were seeing, but again, it makes no sense for me to tune this carb to my saw. Although, the, from what I've seen of that 1020, my strong suspicion is he's got similar compression maybe more. This saw has excellent compression. His also, for certain, has excellent compression. So, you guys don't need to watch me try to fight this carb off of this intake manifold. There's nothing YouTube worthy about that. But, if nothing else, this 222 picked up fuel and ran pretty damn quickly uh, like I said it's wet in here right now I saw the same thing assumed that I'd spilled maybe a little more fuel than I did because once it picked up fuel once it primed this carb it ran like a top so Al hopefully you're good to go uh, only thing of any substance I did was get this accelerator pump out and clean all the garbage out there was a lot of varnished fuel down in there so hopefully this thing will actually work the way it's supposed to now. But I'm going to air this out, package it up, and send it back your way. So one more little blather, I guess I'll say. Uh, the 222, the HL222A is the only uh, 
Only Tillotson HL carb I'm aware of with an accelerator pump. And the only saws that I'm aware of using it were the XP1100, or the XP1000, and the XP1020s. I won't swear on the 1100. I should have checked that before I opened up the video, but they're the same saws that have this idle air bypass. And I'm not... It's weird. So your impulse hole is here. This all bolts down. This is open. This screw actually meters filtered air that'll come in, and then this hose runs down to the base of the cylinder. You guys have probably seen those cylinders on eBay that have that brass barb on them. And that's how you control the idle speed on these. So it's it's strange. On those, those few models I just listed, it's a strange setup. They're the only ones that use this intake manifold with this setup on there. What Tillotson and or Homelite were trying to do or solve with, with this setup, I don't know. Uh, my personal, I don't notice a difference with the accelerator pump. Let me put it to you that way. I don't notice, uh, I ran my XP1000 threw a couple tanks up on the hill years ago uh, cutting some pine. I didn't, its throttle response was great, but I didn't notice a big difference between it and say this, you know, this 2100 with a standard regular carburetor with a regular idle setup. So, I don't know. Uh, don't know what to say about that, but what this does is it just introduces a way to get fuel into the cup and then when you depress the throttle that cam ever so slightly pushes that down and it injects a little bit of fuel into the throat. At almost the fact that it's mixed with this idle air setup leads me to believe that's you know they were they had to work together in order for optimal uh, performance but again I don't know what they were trying to solve or what they were trying to do just a unique thing so anyway I'll get this aired out and headed back to Al, and hopefully we'll see a video on his channel of a 1020 running damn soon.